The urge to call this video importing plants is a fucking disaster is so strong. So hello, welcome. Let me just get right into what we're talking about today. So I am going to be showing you an update on my plant imports. It has been quite a while. I received two shipments 24 hours from each other. One of them showed up October 21st, the other one October 22nd. At the time of recording this video, it is December 12th and things are not looking good still. It's a mess, honestly. So the first day that I got an order in, I had worked really long day. I didn't realize it was showing up that day because both of my shipments got held. They got lost. It took weeks. It was honestly a disaster. So I was like looking at the tracking and I had one shipment that was from Indonesia end up going to LAX and then it was supposed to go to SeaTac where it's supposed to go through the USDA, you know, inspection. But instead it went from LAX to Cincinnati, Ohio for almost a week where I'm assuming it sat in a warehouse. Then it went back to LAX and then I think it went to Washington and then it came to me in Oregon. And then the other one was from South America and I don't know what happened to it but oh it was so gross when I opened the box it, everything was mushy dead it was a disaster I do have footage from the Indonesian import that I'll show you now really briefly so you at least know what they look like when I got them because things went downhill like the next day we just need to crack this open I am so nervous Ooh. It smells like someone's really wet basement. I really can't get over the smell though. This is really bad. Okay, those were some gloriosum. Now it looks like this next one is a Florida ghost. Oh, that has shipped so much better than everything else. It's very flat. Ooh, this one looks really mushy. We have our crystallinum. There are some crusty, crusty, dusty, mm, moldy looking leaves. I am tired and excited. And I don't know, it's hard to look excited when you're just an adult trying to recover from your day. There's so much shouting outside. Well, I guess that's my cue to leave. Okay, great. Now that you've seen what at least part of them looked like, let me show you. So, I don't know. I can't. Hold on. I'm overwhelmed. There's too many plants. I've selected the best looking ones. Just keep that in mind. These are all the best looking ones. This is everything. I'm going to set this down and pull one at a time so that obviously you can see me. I think this video is going to be really useful to you if you are concerned about how well some plants import compared to others because this was definitely a very good learning experience for me because I've had some plants 100% spring back and other ones I have lost almost 90%. They have died, they have rotted, they have become stumps. Disaster. So in no particular order, I'm just going to grab things, talk about them really quickly, let you know how the recovery has been, the whole rundown so that if you're getting one you kind of know what you're expecting. So the first one is is a gloriosum so this leaf actually looks great this was one of the leaves that it was imported with and it did fine but it had more upon arrival and they're obviously gone now but the good news is it's putting out a new leaf here so that's exciting most of them the gloriosums did okay meaning they didn't do anything until this month so all of November they just sat there and I watered them when they got dry and I was like hello hello wake up come on and now they're trying so that at least tells me they don't recover quickly but they don't go into that much shock and I think just seeing how this leaf still looks super normal that says a lot so that's great now let's talk about something that everyone knows they're just notorious you look at them wrong and they go into shock hello do you see this? This is a Philodendron Voracosum El Chaco Red. It was red when I got it, and now the back's just like, this leaf is a mess. This is the best looking one out of all of them. Now, I don't even want to show you the other ones because it's embarrassing. You, you get the idea. Just picture no leaf and a stump that's like a little bit soft. So lots of concern around that. They haven't done shit. I haven't gotten a new leaf. They have not completely rotted away. I've been trying to keep them fairly dry. There's like a volunteer, probably a weed growing in here, and I'm leaving it on purpose because it's helping me monitor the soil a little bit more because 
this one's not really giving me that much. These plants, honestly, I don't recommend importing them. It's been a disaster for me, and the amount of time that I'm going to have to take care of these before I can even sell them is an incredible waste of space. So that's great. They're great plants though. Like if you have a good one that's not in shock, like they're very beautiful. The ones that I got are very large cuttings because this looks like a freaking trunk and the leaves are pretty large, but I have no idea when I'm gonna be launching this on my shop because they look like shit. I'm just kind of setting them to the side. <laughs> Even more shitty than the other shitty is this. There's a leaf on it. Um, what are you? You are a fibrosum. Fill it under in fibrosum. Fam, I have no comments. These are one of the worst. Not the worst, second worst from the imports that I've gotten. They were basically rotten when I got them. These are part of the South American order. The roots were just so dry. The moment they got wet, they just rotted and you just touched them and they all fell off. So I had to start over and they have done absolutely nothing. I can see that there's a growth point right here. Not great, not great. Do I recommend these? Sure, if you can buy one locally, do I recommend importing it? No. I have actually lost a lot of these. I don't think I'm gonna make my money back on them. And it's just really disappointing because I was like, oh, this fibrosum will probably be pretty good because I have like this guamiferum here and I'm like, we love the furry stems. They just do not behave the same. I mean, obviously the leaves are differently, but the amount of shock that this plant went into, it's like they were basically dead when I got them and now it's just like me playing doctor trying to revive them. Not a vibe. Actually, I think I lied about how terrible those were because the absolute worst were these little things. Hello, you know what this is. This is an Anthurium crystallinum. Wait, it is, right? Yeah, Anthurium crystallinum. I only have, I think, two of these that have leaves on them. And this one actually has a normal looking leaf. The other ones, they're just stumps. I actually, I have one here. They look like this. It's great. It's just a stump and it's not soft, so I know it's not rotting, but the growth point has died on the top, so I don't know where life is gonna sprout out for that. And it's obviously not gonna happen anytime soon. Now these ones, you can see from the footage of that Indonesian import, they looked really good. They looked great when I got them. Not even the next morning, most of the leaves had turned yellow. Just overnight, sitting in a 70 degree room, the moment they got water on them, they just all started dying. And it was devastating. And I don't really know what I could have done differently because I think the amount of time they spent in a box was just too long. The transit stress of the package just being bounced around the country just did not do well for these. And luckily I have good humidity levels. So even though this leaf looks incredibly sad, it's not crispy. So that at least tells me that my growing environment's good for them, so long as the plant itself can actually recover. So again, don't recommend importing this. You can get these in like local specialty plant shops or from sellers in the United States that ship them in soil, and I would recommend that because I don't think they handled the chemical treatments for shipping well at all because the roots were disgusting. Another terrible one, <laughs> great. This one, I have a hard time saying it. It's a philodendron rubricinctum platinum, and this is the best one that I have. Like, you're joking, right? Do you see this leaf does not want to be alive? It's like, no thank you, I'd simply rather die and fall off. This was a leaf. Not anymore. So they're basically just stumps. I actually only have this one with a leaf on it. Everything else is just a stump. Are they alive? I think so. A lot of them have this little green on top because it's eventually going to try to put out a new leaf. The stems are kind of feeling like a carrot that's been in the fridge for a couple months. And this has been a bloody nightmare. I don't even understand how because these ones actually look great when I got them. These look the best. I thought these were going to be the fastest to recover. They had like zero leaf damage. They looked great. When I opened that box, the box smelled like rot. It smelled like mold. These looked fantastic. So I was like, all right, little bit of water rehab, put you in some soil, you'll do fine. It only took a few days and then same as the crystallinum, they were just like, no thanks, I'd rather be dead. And I'm left with this. So this is going on close to two months and I have a feeling that maybe by April, these will be nice and healthy and ready to be in your home. But right now, this is a mess. A lot of these, I'm just like, yeah, okay, they're really pretty. Like 
this one I think was called the platinum because the way the light reflected off, it was just like very metallic on the leaves. So I was like, yeah, I need that. But it's getting to a point where I'm like, it's not even worth getting it if I can't actually get plants that survive shipping. And that was in October before it started getting cold in the country. So like, I can't even imagine trying to do like an early spring import to get things ready for a launch. Like that's not gonna happen with that. I'll show you the best ones last because then you'll really know what plants are good, what plants are hardy, and then which ones are not. So the next one that has done relatively shitty as well, this is a philodendron squamaculi, squamacial, squamac, I don't actually know how to say it, I'm sorry. I did it for the fur, like always. The leaves, like I said, I'm showing you the best of the best. Like this leaf came in with the import and it actually looks like pretty okay. You can at least see like the shape and the structure on how the leaves look. This one was part of the import. It just looks like shit. This is the first leaf that I've gotten on any of them. It's a little disheveled. It has a lot of sugar deposits on the back. Like my fingers are instantly sticky. I don't know what that's about. And it's trying to put out a new leaf. The stem is gorgeous on these, by the way. It's like a, like, I don't even know like what type of like, it's like a reddish pink, the stem, and then the fur is like a very, very light, like electric lime green. So the contrasting on the stem is incredible. That's why I got these because my other ones don't really have like that much of it. And I was like, this will be great. It's been rough. It's been rough. This video is just me being like, life's been really hard, okay. <laughs> Will he ever profit? No, probably not. But yeah, this one, don't try to import it, especially, okay, the emphasis I'm trying to put is on if you're on Etsy, eBay, wherever, and you see one rare plant sold from some foreign country and you buy it, that is so risky because when I buy things in bulk, I lose plants. So I couldn't imagine buying one and losing that, that would be devastating. And depending on the circumstances that led to that death, it's not the seller's fault. That's hard to handle mentally, but it's something that needs to be understood that it's not always the seller's fault because once it leaves their hands, as long as they took the care that they needed in packaging, it's kind of just like a gamble. All right, now getting into stuff that did a little better than I expected. This is a philodendron Altiandale. I'm not gonna try anymore. I'm putting the name on the screen. These had a really rough start, but they're finally all starting to look better. This is the best one that I have. You can see the leaf here, looking great. It has some type of like fins on the petiole. What's interesting about this is the stem. Like the internodes are very long, but this is like almost reptilian. I don't know. It's only gonna focus on my face, but I think this is going to be a very interesting looking plant once it's like actually growing and doing okay. I don't know why it's trying to grow like that. I don't have complaints about it. They lost most of their leaves, but they never lost like stiffness in their stems and the roots did okay. And I think these are a little bit more hardy for transit stress, maybe because they probably grow in higher elevation areas where they're native to, so they were fine tolerating lower temperatures in a box. That's my only assumption with that. Now on to things that imported perfectly fine and didn't go into shock, and I don't know how. The first one is the philodendron Florida ghost. Hello. I don't know if it's still going to look like that by the time you look at my website, but the photo of the Florida ghost I had on my website for a while didn't have a ghosty looking leaf. And that's because it didn't start giving me this until the second new leaf. So the first new leaf that came out, I think might have been like this one that I broke somehow. And it was like looking like a little minty, you know, whatever. But then boom, this is yellow. This is beautiful. This is what a Florida ghost is supposed to look like. I was so nervous about these and I did have really bad root rot on them. I had to cut all the roots off, put them in water. They did fine. This already has aerial roots all over it. This is the best looking one. All the other ones look fine. Some of them haven't put out a new leaf for me since I got them, but the leaves are still very, very stiff. There's no sign of like any failing with the plant. I think the roots are just trying to establish themselves and then it'll go, like start going again. Yeah. Drum roll, please. The one that did so incredible. It's actually my new favorite philodendron 
in its category is a Plowmanii. Look at this. I don't even think this is the best one because they all looked really good. This was probably just the one that was easiest for me to grab. Now, this is a crawling one as you would know if you're familiar with them. So yeah, they're crawling, similar to like the Pastazanum, the Gloriosum. It recovered super quick. The moment I put them in soil and I watered them once, let the soil dry out, the next time I watered them, all new leaves. This is a new one here. Looks great. I I heard it. I, I'm really aggressive with these plants. Like I tore this leaf too. I, I don't know what happened. They just recovered incredibly well. This looks great. Like honestly, I could probably sell this now and be fine. I do want to wait till I get a couple more leaves with me because I know their structure is going to look better. Like this leaf is from me. So the petiole is not very long. These ones are the ones that was imported with and it just looked like maybe they were growing too close together in the nursery because the petiole is just so long and like gangly. And it was just my assumption that it really had to push the leaf pretty far to get sunlight. And I don't like that because I like my plants to look more compact and then it's just like a bunch of little leaves close to each other. So I'll probably wait for that. By the time you're watching this, I will have some on my website. I have only a couple that look really good right now and I want to get them sold before they start taking over and trying to grow completely out of the pot because I already have two that are like this far over the side of the pot because it's just trying to go and I just need it to go home with someone <laughs> before it starts growing into the other pots in the tray. All right, so that was a video that was hopefully informational for you. I think honestly just having a visual on an update says a lot. You can obviously tell from what I showed you what plants had a lot of shipping stress and didn't recover and which ones had the stress and sprung right back once they were in the proper environment and then there's some that I'm like I always forget the camera stops recording at a certain amount of time what was I saying there are obviously some plants that I showed you today that I would not pay you to import now if you're just like a personal collector I just don't recommend importing some of these it's devastating so I hope this was informative to you if we're gonna like tally things up if you are importing a plant if you don't want to buy one locally, you want to think you're saving money by importing one and paying for shipping and you know, all that. You have to make sure you have your permit for it. You know, all that jazz. Florida Ghost, Gloriosum, Plamanii, those are safe if you order one. I have a really good feeling you wouldn't lose that plant. Everything else, especially Anthurium, it's tough. It's a gamble. Obviously, mine are worse because, like I said, both of my shipments got stuck in transit at some point. So I know that in a normal situation, they are not going to look as shitty as mine have, but it still says a lot about like how temperamental these plants are. I'm ending the video here. <laughs> if you found this helpful, please like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're not, check out my website, Tristanical. I also have an Instagram for Tristanical where I announce new launches of plants. I'm also known to do giveaways, so keep your eye out for that. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, goodbye.